y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. I've had a lot of questions about hand saws. Uh, what are the different types of saws used for? What do I look for when I'm buying a saw? Uh, what is the difference in, in teeth and the shape and the used and a back saw and a panel saw and a, a Japanese style saw? Um, where do they come in and what do I need to know about it? Um, so I really want to take some time and go through some of the variables that happen in saws and hopefully clear up a little bit of the misconception on it and uh, make it a little bit simpler. It really isn't a very confusing um, topic, it's just one that uh, not as many people know about and once you understand the basics of it then you can extrapolate out uh, for yourself what you want in your shop. So let's uh, take a look at what we have. So for the purpose of this movie, I'm going to be talking about handles and the plates. I'm not going to be going into a lot of the specifics, I'm just kind of giving an overview of what is going on. Um, and the handle is actually one of the best places to find out information about um, the quality of the saw. Uh, over time you will learn things about the plate and what that can mean, uh, but the handle really gives you a lot of information. Uh, particularly on its age. And a newer saw that was whipped out in a mill um, has these sharp corners at the handle and you can definitely tell that a router has gone in and cut out the, the rounded shape. Um, it wasn't something that was hand filed in. Whereas with a um, a more traditional handsaw, the radius is different uh, here as it is over here and it is over here and you can tell that that was hand filed um, to actually create a, a different shape and the, there aren't any sharp lines on where the flat of the handle meets the round of the handle. It is completely rounded over. That lets you know it's older. This handle was probably hand sculpted by somebody and they were feeling it and, and uh, working on it a little bit more. Um, the uh, the medallions then can tell you a lot of information about the age of the saw as uh, different uh, different saw companies slowly change the medallion over time. Um, and you just kind of start to get an eye for what is a decent quality um, saw by looking at the handles. And the more you look at them, the more things become just obviously apparent to them. So the other thing that varies greatly on handles is the angle of the handle to the plate. And so if I put this on the plate, uh, you can see that there's probably about a what, uh, eight degree, maybe six degree angle uh, between the handle here and the plate. Whereas if I come over to this back saw, um, there is a much greater, it's almost like uh, 35, maybe 40 degrees um, between the handle and the plate. And a lot of that is dependent upon how they are intended to be used. Uh, if you are cutting with the board low to the bench, you want the hand you want the handle to be closer to 90 degrees to the plate because your your uh, your saw is down low. The higher up you go, the more you're going to be rolling your hand forward, and you want a higher pitch on the blade, and you're wanting something else. So a lot of your dovetail saws tend to have a fairly steep. Um, handle, whereas um, a lot of the panel saws have a, a flatter handle. Um, but that's not always the case, and uh, like this massive uh, rip saw that I have, um, I, I love this one, has a very steep handle. Um, this one is, uh, is more designed for uh, working with the blade as opposed to having the blade flat on the table, having it at an angle and going down into your work. Um, so for more cutting at a saw bench. And then on a whole other note, you can then get into Japanese style um, saws. Now this is actually a very bad example of it. It is a cheap one you can get from Harbor Freight. Um, I used to have several other nicer um, Dazukis, but I have gotten rid of them because uh, the body mechanics needed for a Japanese saw is very, very different from the body mechanics needed for uh, a traditional Western saw. And if you're doing one or the other is good, but when you mix them up, you tend to um, kind of mess up your, your, your grip style. And I really like the feel and the strength of a Western saw. That is my personal preference. I like it. I, I don't like um, much of the Japanese style, but that, that's my own personal preference. Everyone's going to be a little bit different. Um, and the, the benefit that you get with these is very different from the benefit that you get with a Western saw. Um, also, the teeth on these are sharpened differently. 
um, they have they don't have a set um, that you get with a western saw and there's a lot of other dif differences and that's uh, a topic for a whole nother movie but uh, for now I'm just basically going to say I'm not going to be talking a whole lot about this um, other than there's a whole nother grip for this and this is great if you are working at a bench on the floor um, a Japanese style bench they would be um, kneeling or cross-legged at and the grip then rather than being like with a, with a western saw it would be more of a pistol grip like this uh, with it rotated all the way 180 degrees to the plate um, you're going to be wanting to be above the saw when you're moving it and so sometimes that makes it very difficult if you're trying to cut dovetails and you're up higher and you're trying to then grip it like this um, it can do bad things to your wrist uh, so that's basically why I stick mostly with western saws now that we've discussed the handle and different types of grips, let's move on to the main event, uh, talking about the plate. This is where all the action happens, all the cutting is down here. And uh, I'm not going to talk about rip saw versus cross cut saw. I've already done a video completely dedicated to the difference between that, those. Um, so if you want to know that, um, go click the link over here and uh, you'll see a lot more information on that. Um, but other than cross cut and rip cut, there are a lot of other differences in it. Um, the other big item is the number of teeth per inch. So you'll hear uh, TPI or PPI uh, points per inch or um, um, teeth per inch. And uh, teeth per inch is if you draw from one point to another point, how many teeth are in that. And so if you start at a point that's a half tooth and you end at a point that's a half tooth making a full tooth. So if you had um, eight, um, eight TPI, there would be an eighth of an inch between every single tooth. Um, if you have eight PPI, uh, that means slightly more because if you count points per inch, um, then you're actually going to be counting the first tooth and the last tooth are all in that inch. Um, so I, I try to stick with uh, TPI um, teeth per inch because it, it's a little bit simpler. <laughs> On a lot of the old saws, you'll actually see a number um, right down here, and that number is how many uh, teeth per inch this saw originally had. Um, if it hasn't been filed um, or the teeth been changed, you know that this one had eight teeth per inch, so an eighth inch in between them. So now that you know the difference between what is a 5 TPI and an 8 TPI, um, what is their purpose? What is their difference? And basically, the bigger the tooth is, the faster it's going to cut, the more material it's going to take out in every stroke, uh, which sounds great, but that also means you're going to get a rougher cut. You're going to get more scratching on the surface, um, and it is going to be more like a milled surface with a large tooth like this. Uh, with a smaller tooth, you get a finer cut. You get a smoother finish. Um, it's going to be a little bit slower cutting, though, because you're taking out less per cut. So that seems fairly straightforward, and it's something you want to think about. Um, if you're just doing rough cutting and getting boards to a general size, Large teeth are great for that, whereas when you're getting closer to your final mark, you're going to want to get small teeth. And so that's why when you get into a dovetail saw, um, these teeth are sometimes 20 or 30 TPI. This particular one is uh, 20 TPI. And uh, you get a really, really nice fine cut uh, with uh, little teeth like that. So after teeth, the next thing is the size and shape of the plate itself. Uh, in a traditional western saw, the back saw, in other words on the back of the saw there is this bar up here that stiffens the plate. This allows you to have a thinner plate while still ma maintaining its stiffness so that the plate doesn't wind and twist as it goes to the board. This back on it keeps the plate nice and tight. And that is great, but the problem is you can only cut up to this distance. And so sometimes that gets in the way and it's uh, not as nice as you want it to be. And so when you don't have a back, then you can get on a panel saw or a plate saw. Or the, I'm not going to go into the differences between what is a panel saw. I'm going to refer to anything without a back as a panel saw because it is a panel as opposed to a back. Yes, I know that there are all sorts of different differences. Some people say that a panel saw is 24 inches or shorter. Some people say that a panel saw is 24 inches or larger. Um, there are camps on what things are named all over the place. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to call this a panel saw. You can chew me out in the comments. That's fine. <laughs> um, but a, uh, a panel saw doesn't have the back on it. So you can keep cutting as deep as you want and it will keep going down. 
And that is great for doing long rips and things of that nature. Um, but because the saw is so long, you tend to have less control out here at the tip as you do back here. And it does make it heavier, so you're going to be using far more force as this is cutting. Whereas with the back saw, they're intended to be no heavier than they absolutely need to be. And a lot of the really high scale um, dovetail saws, and this really isn't a high scale, although Veritas makes a very good dovetail saw. Um, these are very light, very easy to hold, and uh, really don't take much force at all uh, just because of how easy they are to move around. And so that's one of the, the great benefits of a back saw. So then you're talking to yourself about uh, what are the different uses for all of these saws. And basically in my standard arsenal, I keep eight saws. Um, I have like 30 some saws, but I only use eight on a general everyday basis. And so I kind of want to go through those biggest to smallest. So first up in my arsenal, I have my large rip saw. Um, and this is for doing the massive stock prep when I just want to tear through wood quickly. I'm not worried about leaving a rough edge. I just want to get it down to shape and it's long. It's uh, 26 inches. It is uh, a great saw just to, to go to town in it. Then you have uh, something smaller like this. This is actually a crosscut saw. Um, and you don't generally need a massive crosscut saw unless you're cutting logs or things like that. But if I have like a 4x4 four four or a 5x5 uh, five five in here, this is a great saw for that. The teeth are a little bit small. I'm not going to be taking a, a huge chunk out. Um, but with a crosscut with this, I'm going to be able to go through it a little bit faster. Um, I probably should have one with like a um, 8 TPI, but the, the 10 TPI works fine for me. Then we go one step farther down, and you'll notice that all my saws are paired, um, a cross cut and a rips cut um, saw. And usually the uh, cross cut is actually a little smaller than the rip cut as I have them in pairs because you tend to have um, less board to go through when you're cutting across it as opposed to when you're cutting with the board. Uh, and so now I have an 8 TPI on my rip and 11 TPI on my cross cut. And uh, these are uh, these are fantastic for the in-between stock prep. So I've cut the boards to their general size, um, but I need to uh, take off you know, three quarter inch um, or something of that nature just to bring it down to, to closer to its final. Um, or I have a, a large chunk that is, you know, like the size of a bowling ball that I need to cut on the bench. Uh, these are great for that and I can cut through a lot of material fairly fast. Um, but these are not for my fine detail cutting. So there's all the panel saws that I normally use. And then we get onto the back saws. And again, I have them in pairs of a rip cut and a cross cut. And then, and then I have a cross cut and a rip cut. <laughs> so the, you kind of get them in, in pairs that you have four different sizes of saws. And then in each size, you have two saws, one for cutting across the grain and one for cutting with the grain. And this is often referred to as a tenon saw uh, because you are often ripping down the board to cut the cheeks and, um, of your tenons. Um, but then you also have a, a cross cutting saw, also sometimes known as a carcass saw. Um, but the names um, I really don't want to get into because there's a lot of. Um, fighting and bickering about what is the name of a saw and everyone has their own name for the saw in this range. If you ever hear someone talking about a tenon saw or a carcass saw, just know that they're talking about something in this range, usually with a back. <laughs> and you're probably going to have a good idea, but uh, a lot of people um, switch names around for different things and whatever camp you're in or website you go to, you're going to have a different name for it. So these are my uh, rip saw and cross cut saw in this length. They're about you know the 15 to 18 inch length uh, with about three inches of cut um, to the back. And that is most of the cuts you're gonna be making for any tenon um, or getting close to your, your larger joinery cuts. After that, then I step down to these two. And then these are usually the last saws to touch the wood. Um, and this is, it only has about a two and a half inch um, cut and it is a 14 TPI rip. 
Um, this is what I will be doing a lot of my um, bench cross cutting with. So anytime that I have my bench hook, I'm often using this to do all of my cross cutting with. Because um, rarely am I going to be cutting anything that's thicker than two and a half inches. This is a, a very accurate, uh, leaves a fairly clean cut, and uh, often the last saw that will touch it. The, uh, the wood. And then the dovetail saw. Um, and a lot of people only use their dovetail saw for dovetails. And that is great, um, but they do much more. It is generally a rip cut um, because most dovetails are done into the end of the board and so you're actually ripping out the board. And then you can get into frame saws and bow saws. And uh, this is uh, just a whole nother realm. Um, but when it comes to teeth, it's basically the exact same thing, uh, having a rip saw and a cross cut saw. And even in this case, um, I have two of these frame saws and one of them is a rip and one of them is a cross with the same TPI on them. Um, and so I can, I can have the same thing. I use these a lot for my, wood, my green wood. Um, if I'm cutting a, a, a log in the shop, um, these are absolutely fantastic for that. Um, a lot of the uh, European style um, woodworking, especially on the mainland, um, used these instead of tenon saws uh, for doing a lot of their joinery cutting. And so that's one place you're going to find them. And then you get into small things like a turning saw. And this is basically the replacement of a band saw um, in traditional wood shops. And you get a small fine blade with fine teeth, um, often as, as fine as a dovetail saw and sometimes all the way up to like four or five TPI, just like you would find with a, a band saw. Um, but great for doing your detailed curving and bending. Um, all along this line, you can also then get into your fret saw or your scroll saw. <laughs> and so you're kind of going down a rabbit hole there. And then last but not least, you also have the Rebo style frame saw, um, which um, these can get massive. Uh, this one is only 32 inches of blade. Um, and they get all the way up to like six, eight feet. Um, and until you get into some of the pit style saws and those get up to, you know, 12 feet or more. Um, so, you know, saws go all over the place. Do you need all of these saws in your shop? No, absolutely not. So then we come down to the question of what saw should I buy first? If I only get one saw in my shop, uh, what do I need to get? I mean, with all of these choices, um, what's out there? And my answer is um, saws are so cheap and so common, you can get just about anything anywhere. Um, I get most of my saws at garage sales for $5 or less and clean them up and fix them up. Um, I'll leave a video over here that you can see that. Um, but if you had to have one saw, I would probably get a panel saw or a, uh, a straight-backed um, Japanese saw um, that would have a, a TPI of around 10 with a cross cut pattern. Um, and I find that is a very versatile style. If I really, really needed to, I could cut dovetails with this. Uh, they wouldn't be the best dovetails in the world, but I could. And I could rip down an entire board eight feet long with one of these. It wouldn't be a great and enjoyable experience, but it would do it okay. And so something in the mid range of all of these, around eight to 10 TPI, uh, a cross cut. Also, if you have to choose one, I find it's easier to use a cross cut to rip than it is to use a rip saw to cross cut. Um, but eh, a little bit of both. So basically, if you were to have one saw, I would narrow it down to something with an eight to 10 TPI and uh, a open back so you don't have to stop with a, uh, a back saw. And you can do most all of your work with one of these. And you can pick these up at a garage sale or an antique shop, just about anywhere, and uh, have yourself a nice shop, nice saw. Now, I know this was kind of short, and if we were really going into saws in depth, this video would be several hours long. Um, and I'm sure you have a lot of other questions about the saws, and this has just opened up a, a whole new realm of questions for you. That'd be great. Uh, let me know. I will answer them in the comments below. But I'm hoping this at least gives you a starting frame so that the next time you're at a garage sale and you see a distin or a back saw and you're wondering, you know, is that worth it? Is that a saw that I need? Uh, what can that saw do, do that to one of my other saws uh, doesn't do? Uh, I hope now that you uh, at least have some idea about where you're going with that. So I hope you like the video. If you did, uh, please hit like and think about subscribing. 
I want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are absolutely phenomenal and a huge encouragement to me. Uh, thank you for that. If uh, this was something that you liked, you may find you like one of the other videos. And until next time, have a wonderful day.